welcome you to the latest edition of Inside the Voice Actors Studio. For those of you who haven't been to this panel before, guests and attendees alike, let me explain a little bit about how it's going to work. I've been involved with staffing and running conventions since June of 2001. Uh, during that time, conventions, anime series, attendees have all grown and evolved into what we see today. The one thing that hasn't really changed, however, is the interactions between the fans and the guests. Fans will get starstruck when meeting these very real people I have sitting over here. And it's, very, it's, it's really unfortunate. All of these guests are under no delusions that you are all the reason they continue to have work. And they adore having the opportunity to interact with as many fans as they can. Being unable to speak to them when you get an autograph is as uncomfortable for them as it is embarrassing for you. That's why I set out to get this event off the ground. I felt Speak by for me. yourself, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know anything. I'm just, I'm just reading, I'm reading the paper. Man. I know <laughs> I felt that by learning more about them on a personal level as opposed to the professional level you hear about during their other panels, it might help you get some common ground and make it easier yeah. to engage with your, favorite, uh, with your favorite guests. Now, I'm sure many of you in here know the guests that I have, but uh, let me get our obligatory introductions out of the way anyway. With roles like Akane and Psychopaths, Misaki and Darker Than Black, Lollipop and Shinchan, and Catherine Armstrong and Fullmetal Alchemist, there is certainly a series or role in her resume that just about anyone has heard of. Please welcome Kate Oxley. Yeah. Carla in Fairy Tale, Takumi in Ghost Urn, Koneko in High School DxD, Akatsuki in Log Horizon, and Ai Hibiki in Rolling Girl only scratches the surface. Oh, I, hate this. I hate this tablet. I really do. <clears throat> it's better in the uh, Only scratching the surface when it comes to the list our role of roles our next guest has performed. Strike Witches, Bacano, and Soul Eater. The list just goes on. Please welcome Jade Saxton. <laughs> our third guest was recently announced as the voice of Meryl in the Funimation redub of Escaflone. When you put that credit alongside Anya and Soul Eater Not, Kurumi and Daily Live, Mocha and Rosario to Vampire, and Alicia and Tales of Zestria, you can see why we are pleased to have with us Alexis Tipton. <laughs> Our next guest, Soul Eater Evans and Soul Eater. That sounds not much, dumb. More, not much more really needs to be said, however, to prevent our guest department from giving you dirty looks. I will mention his other roles in series such as A Certain Magical Index, One Piece. Uh, Seraph at the End, Fairy Tale, Space Dandy, and Tokyo Ghoul. Please welcome Micah Solosa. <laughs> let's see here. Uh, Shaoran and Tsubasa Reservoir Chronicles, Earl and D. Grayman, Finian and Black Butler, Sohei and Wolf Children, Yato and Origami, Train and Black Cat, Luck and Dakano. Need I say more? Please welcome Jason Lieber. <laughs> where he worked for the late, great ABV films. Two years later, he moved over to Funimation and hasn't looked back. <laughs> Wedding Peach, Steam Detectives, Kenichi the Mightiest Disciple, Attack on Titan, Wallflower, Wallflower, Lime Barrels of Iron, the list goes on for Mr. Josh Greeley. <laughs> now, the format of the event is very simple. I'm going to start out by asking a bunch of questions to our panel of guests here to give you an idea of how it works. When we have about 20 or so minutes left, I'll open it up to all of you and let you start asking questions. So I'll start with two questions that always get to get our guests relaxing and chatting a bit. The first one is, what was your first car? <laughs> yeah, it's that kind of thing. Okay. <laughs> I'll answer first. My first car was a 1987 Volkswagen Cabriolet. Convertible. Oh, oh, yeah, nice. it's really fancy. Well, that was in 1999. Uh, I was starting to drive, so 87 was. It wasn't really like the cool thing then, but it was cool to me, and I loved that car. I would like wax it on the weekends and <laughs> detail all the buttons, even though they were it was falling apart. But. You always fall hard for the first time. Yeah, I loved that car. <laughs> loved it. Uh, I had a 1975 Dodge Colt that cost $700. <laughs> Which was a lot of money back then. Yeah, I'm really, really, really old. <laughs> I can't I remember the year. I think it might have been a... I don't know what year. Maybe 88 Mercury Tracer? Oh, that's pretty good, too. It was red. It was a hatchback. I didn't realize that you needed gas a lot of the time. And my friends would push me to gas stations often because I'd run out of gas. It took me a while to learn about cars. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Surprise! Uh, I'm from Hawaii, so I walked everywhere. Uh, so I'll say I had a dolphin. 
you swam to school. Yeah. Yeah, very good, very good. Yeah, except when you're out running a volcano god. Yeah. <laughs> the year in mine either. I think it was like a 2005, but it was a red Chevy Cobalt. Ooh, wow. Sounds a lot fancier than it was. Uh, mine was a 2001 race car red uh, Chevrolet Silverado. It was had an extend cab. Yeah, it was my it was my first. Yeah, it had a. Uh, like, dude, like, dude, here's the deal. Like, my dad wanted me to have like this awesome. Like, I grew up in like a, a like a farm town and stuff. So like, he wanted me to have like this really cool truck as well. So like, once I picked it out and we went and like got it. Uh, he, we put a three-inch lift on it, raised white letter tires, and a chrome firefighter style, like, like it was a firefighter grade grill guard on the front. This truck punched things. Like, like any time, I, I must have had, like, it was my first car, I had, like, maybe four accidents in that car, three of which were other people, like, like one time, uh, it was just parked, and someone hit me. And their car was completely dented in and damaged. I had no scratches on it. Like, it, 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 they would almost always hit the front with the grill guard. And so, literally, it would just, like, punch people in the face. Nice. Like, I love that truck. If this is a competition, I think really wins. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Cool. okay. Yeah. We had a slideshow, like, of each of us with our Yeah, with the car. Ryan. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. That would be awesome. Me and my dolphin. <laughs> how, many, uh, how, how many miles do fish on them? Uh, I don't know. Hawaiian miles and... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a weird conversion. That's a weird conversion. Um, now the second one that audiences tend to really like, what was your first job? <laughs> wow. Uh, I worked in my hometown's little crappy video store for all of three weeks. And after that I went to the neighborhood Sonic for two weeks. Both of them were just not good jobs. Sonic! Um, my... I, my first job was acting. <laughs> so I don't have any, I Woot! Don't. She still I has it. it. But the, tell the tell the other one. Like you know. Do you have? A, did you ever have another job? The only other job I've had besides acting oh was. <laughs> you know, um, I worked at Bath and Body Works for a season. Hey, okay, I you bet go. you smell delicious. You know. <laughs> I loved selling those products to people. We'd get like little old ladies that would come in and be like, I just want to play around. What do you have? And I'd be like, this candle smells like a sexy man. And she would I'd be like, oh, my husband will suspect foul play. <laughs> so, so good. I loved it. I love that. The perfect old lady impression. Oh. Quaint Southern old lady. I love that. I love that. With, with expendable income, yes. Uh, Professional economic stimulators is what they're called. Bless you, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, once again, since I lived in Hawaii, my first job was washing giant tour buses that would go up to the mountain. They were white, by the way. So imagine those like rock tour buses, right? Except just pure white. Every time they'd come down from the mountain, they'd be caked with mud. And with my big tanks here, imagine how quickly I could wash those. Not very quickly. Yeah, that was fun. Um. <laughs> You know what? I can get a little bit can compete with Alexis. Oh my! Because I, I guess my first job was when I was nine and I had a commercial. But but I'll tell oh, you about. Oh, oh. Well, shut me up. <laughs> oh, it was a Tom Thumb commercial, which is a grocery store. Yes. <laughs> it was about broccoli and cauliflower. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Sorry. It's your next hit album. Uh -huh. Yeah, I got made fun of in school. They like, called me Broccoli Girl. Anyways, it was like, whatever. They were jealous. But then when I was about 15, I wanted some more, you know, some money to do with what I, I wanted, you know, like you do when you're a teenager. So I found a pool store, like swimming pools, chemical store within walking distance of my house. So I would walk there and people would bring their pool water in and I would like test it for algae or whatever, and then... I was, which I thought was ridiculous. <laughs> I was like, why are they trusting me with this? Like, I don't know. Yeah, full store. Would you, like, recommend chlorine? Like <laughs> yeah, it was basically, I really feel like it was just, like, a ruse to, like, try and sell them crap tons of different pool chemicals that they needed to buy, like, because I don't feel like it was an exact science, especially with a 15-year-old who'd been doing it for two weeks. <laughs> 
Uh, my first job was as a roller skating car hop at Sonic. Nice. And uh, I worked there for two and a half years, and yeah, until I went to school and then started acting. I would prefer that to flipping burgers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, technically, I think the first one was in a play, and then I was in uh, a movie that I won't mention because it'll age me even further. Um, but then I worked uh, making croissant and Caesar salad at a French restaurant chain that I will not mention. Anyway, that's all. Yes, that one. I love them. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Now, since we're closing in on Halloween, when you went trick-or-treating as a kid, what was the one piece of candy you always hoped to get, and what was the one you were most willing to trade away? I'm assuming, Micah, that they had uh, trick-or-treating in Hawaii. No, we had sacrifices to volcano gods. <laughs> and Lula and Stitch, but, um, who's counting? So should we answer this? Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I want everybody to be able to. Thank you, okay. I appreciate that. I just want to be inclusive. Um, I, I like the, the Reese's family. It's pretty exciting to me. Um, and I don't like raisinettes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's raisins in there. Um, I grew up in Southern California, not a very good area, so my mom would let us go trick-or-treating, but we weren't allowed to eat any of the candy because people did bad things to the candy. Oh, dang. Which, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like laughable at first, but you think about it like people put bad stuff in there. So we would just throw it away and she'd buy me like a bag of whatever I wanted. So. What did you like? Uh, Reese's or Milk Duds. I love Milk Duds. Okay. Like the green room that we're all hanging out in, probably nobody else has eaten Milk Duds in the last couple days because whenever I see them, I'm like, Snatch him. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was, I think, into the, the chocolate, so I liked the uh, Reese's and or Mr. Good Bars. I'm a fan. Those are pretty good. I think, I'm trying to think of the ones I didn't really like. Uh, oh, anything that was like black licorice. Yeah. Not a fan of that flavor. Yeah, likewise. I didn't like the black licorice, but uh, I was quite fond of the Nestle's Crunch bars, yeah. the mini ones in particular. Yeah, that was my fave. Yeah, as a kid, I definitely, I really liked chocolate, but I also liked Skittles. So Skittles and like Hershey milk chocolate was like my jam, not at the same time. Uh, <laughs> and uh, what I would always trade away was, actually, you can have all the milk duds, Kate, because I don't like them. So I always traded milk duds. Um, I also hated Tootsie Rolls, so I always gave away Tootsie Rolls. I like the flavored ones, though, like the strawberry Tootsie Rolls. Those were good, but not the, yeah, but not like the normal ones. The chocolate one. Yeah. 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 See, they're like Yuhu candy. Yeah. Yeah. Yuhu. Chocolate flavor. The nights of Columbus when you say that. I always look forward to the Reese's and Starburst. I love Reese's. And. I generally, I also, I did not like Mill Dugs, and I did not like uh, any, I did not like Twizzlers. Twizzlers. Any sort of Twizzler or anything like that. No matter the flavor. If you had a week to travel anywhere in the world at no cost, where would you go and why? Uh, either Japan, because I have not been yet, and I wanted to go forever, or New Zealand. A place I've been, I, I, I love going to Japan, I always want to go back. Um, Japan, a place I haven't been, um, Italy. Uh, I'd like to go to where my family is from in Japan, the, the, uh, the, the current Satsuma area. Uh, if you guys know the Meiji era or anything, Choshu and Satsuma are two clans that fought then, uh, and I'd like to see where my family fought. That'd be cool. Um, my dream places as of late, sometimes it shifts, are Scotland, and um, Japan is one, and um, Turkey. I don't know, I'm really like drawn to that area. It's so colorful and bright and like, yeah, like a uh, I would go to Rome, haven't been there. Um, I would go visit my family uh, in Chile. I've never been there. Um, and for pleasure, probably Thailand. So on the, by the same token, if you could travel to any time period for a week, when would it be? <laughs> this one usually gets. <laughs> I'm not trying to stump the night. 
I'd like to answer for Jason since he's not ready with his own answer. Jason would travel to 30 minutes from now so he could know all these questions in advance and be ready next time. <laughs> I don't know either. Yeah, Hypocrite. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, the, even though it was a very, um, uh, probably really bad time to be alive, uh, if it was only for a week, <laughs> I would go. I love, um, Elizabeth I and the Tudors and, like, all of that stuff, so I would love to travel back and, like, kind of be in court and, like, watch all of the, you know, the intrigue and drama, like, unfolding <laughs> within the Tudor court. That'd be cool. I'd actually go forward. I don't care how far. Just like, let's just go to the future. I want to see like, what else. It's like, especially with how VR technology is right now, I want to see what the fir when the first holodeck comes out, and then I'll just stay there for there you go. There you Star go. Trek, man, I love it. Sell the yes, I'll I'll make it. Time. I would go to a time. You got claps for that. <laughs> I don't know why, you have such low standards. <laughs> yeah, gosh, this is so hard. I feel like, yeah, I mean, uh, 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 I kind of, like, ancient, uh, like, uh, Greece kind of fascinates me, like, maybe there, but I also, I just got done watching 11-22-63, and I really am, like, a fan of like the whole Kennedy thing, and so I kind of like to go back, yeah, to 1960, 63, back in the... Okay, now that I've had time to think, my official answer is biblical times. I'm thinking the 20s, roaring 20s. Where in the 20s though, like a particular place? Um, either Chicago or New York. Oh, yeah, nice. Prohibition. Yeah. I'll do one that's still bad stuff, Jen. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll do one that, that won't uh, throw you for a loop as much. Your favorite Disney movie. Oh. No, that's a horrible question. I love all of them. Uh, <laughs> I, I didn't say you couldn't answer like that. Oh, okay. That's my answer. <laughs> um, the most recent Star Wars film. Hey. <laughs> okay, I was thinking animation, but I'm a huge Star Wars fan. But, going along with my original thought of animation, uh, as far as artwork, I love the artwork in 101 Dalmatians, but my favorite uh, film as far as the characters and what I related to as a child was Peter Pan. Hey. <laughs> Man, I, yeah, like I know there's ones that I'm not thinking of, but yeah, I did, I did always love Peter Pan. Um, I'm trying to see what my favorite was. I, I also was a huge Little Mermaid fan. Yay. Yay. Check, check, <laughs> Especially, especially. Uh, I, I liked The Great Mouse Detective. Yeah. That's still one of my favorites. Um, as far as current ones, uh, Big Hero 6. Oh, yeah. yeah, Baymax. I've seen that. <laughs> I, I, I have like an unhealthy obsession with Disney, this, this but if I had to choose my top this was three, three. three. Uh, <laughs> uh, sleep, uh, for older ones, um, Sleeping Beauty and Alice in Wonderland, I absolutely adore. Um, and then my favorite, or one of my favorite uh, more contemporary ones is Brave. Brave. Uh, <clears throat> we have two now. Uh, my very first movie to ever see in a theater was Little Mermaid, yeah. uh, and yeah. like so that was still like it's so like it's, it yeah. holds a special place for me. It was just really cool, uh, but I think my favorite in terms of just like this overall story and and the things that it the message that it's trying to send would be Hunchback of Notre Dame. Oh. Nice. I, I want to have a, an animated answer as well. I think the Rescuers. Yes. Oh. Which one? Which one? There was the Rescuers and the Rescuers Down Under. Yeah, yeah not, not the one Down Under. <laughs> the, one, the one above. Josh, yeah. What, Mike? I said, I'll write to you. Uh, as I mentioned at the start of the panel, the purpose of the panel is to help fans avoid getting starstruck around their favorite actors. However, I'll ask you, who do you think you'd get starstruck around? <laughs> 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 this is just anyone during this industry. I would say in, in pretty much your industry or anywhere in Hollywood. Okay. 
Uh, I actually, when I met Patrick Stewart for all of five minutes, uh, I got, you know that feeling after you go on a really rock and roller coaster yeah. and your adrenaline is so high, but after you crash, you feel like crap for two hours? That's what meeting Patrick Stewart was like you know, for me. Like, <laughs> dude, it was like I just, I wanted to throw up for like two hours afterwards. Like, oh my god, that was Patrick Stewart. Uh, I would probably have the same reaction with Mark Hamill. On the one hand, I think I would, I think I would be very starstruck if I met anyone, like like if I met Anthony Hopkins, I would be really, really starstruck just because his body of work is incredible. I love his speaking voice. Um, he's a very accomplished, just artist. I mean, he writes music, but at the same time, it's like I like to think that I, and I'm sure that this would be disproven if I ever met anybody like that. But I always am sort of like, I I know what it feels like on a very small level. Um, to, you know, with, with the very small amount of, of fame that we have all, you know, enjoyed. Oh, but, you know, See, but, it's, it's, <laughs> but like, I, I always appreciate it when people treat me like a person, and so if I met someone famous, I wouldn't want to treat them like they were this, like, unattainable thing. And, like, I would want to sit down and have a conversation with them as a person and as an like, artist, but that doesn't mean I wouldn't be, like, jumping for joy on the inside. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, and who knows, I might absolutely lose my mind if I met someone like Anthony Hopkins, but, you know. Uh, really, any of the, uh, because I'm an artist at, at heart, uh, any mangaka or animation director that, uh, for any of the shows that I've worked on, because I know the characters more intimately, uh, I'd probably just die. <laughs> yeah, I'd die. <laughs> right there. Um, Gary Oldman? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Star is right there. Boom. Come back, Jay. Come back. <laughs> you know, come, you come towards the light, Jay. I'm no longer going to be free time when I need Yeah, um, for sure. Um, and probably some other, probably Daniel Radcliffe, maybe. Yeah. Not he's, not, he's not anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I think I I would be like Alexis though, like maybe wouldn't be able to tell, but then again maybe I wouldn't hide it so well. Okay, branching off what you said, uh, I got to meet Alan Rickman once and I've always loved him. His his speech and um, he's awesome. I'm a huge Harry Potter fan, so that was incredible and uh, I was pretty awestruck. I think there were a lot of people in this room who were very jealous of you. Yeah. Yep. I had an experience uh, waiting to uh, open a play in New York when I lived there, um, where they, they held the curtain and they had somebody come and tell me that they were waiting for a VIP, and then that person, I asked, well, who? And they said, oh, David Bowie. Whoa! And I, he didn't show up, but I didn't know how I was going to go on that. I was playing Johnny Rotten in this play, and man, I was so freaking scared. <laughs> Um, anyway, I wish it had happened now. Yeah. Yeah. Been a challenge. So we had a very prominent sporting event down in Brazil this year for all those of you living in Iraq. Uh, so what would you say your favorite summer and winter Olympic events? Uh, look at that. Summer, yeah, summer, I really like watching gymnastics. I think it's amazing what all of those, those it's just incredible, like what the human body is capable of. Yeah. Um, and then for body. yeah, not mine. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, winter, um, probably figure skating. Uh, I'm, I've been getting into football. It's, uh, I, I like soccer. It's, uh, it's been really, especially the uh, U.S. women's team. The last couple of years, I've been rocking it hard. Uh, and winter, I don't know. I like I like the figure skating. I like the costumes and stuff. Uh, I also like uh, I've enjoyed watching some of the the, the snowboarders. Oh yeah, that's uh, too. I've also I've recently started liking football. I found that I like football and like soccer because just how ridiculously intense it gets uh -huh. and aggressive. Like watching someone be like, ah, oh, you know, when nothing happened to him at all, it's kind of amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're truly actors. Um, but uh, for for or anything really with running, I find, is really cool. Um, but for winter, definitely figure skating 
and uh, I have an odd fascination with curling because <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> I just don't get it, but it's cool, right? Yeah. It's cold, right? <laughs> it happens in winter, Sorry. right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, gymnastics for sure. Always been obsessed every year it comes on. Even when it's not Olympic, it's just the regular yeah. stuff, the championship things they do. I'm just like, oh, wish you could do those things. That would be amazing. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's what I would do if I met Gary Oldman. <laughs> um, <laughs> and for winter, uh, I like figure skating too. Uh, I, I love snowboarding, like watching those dudes do that, and then hockey team. Oh, diving! Those dives, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice uh, mine is figure skating and gymnastics, just like Alexis. Oh, yeah. uh, summer, the decathlon, the 100 yard dash, um, and winter, uh, skeleton or the luge. Yeah. This seemed pretty dangerous. <laughs> Skeletons head first, man. Yeah, it's, like, it's got a cool name. <laughs> when you were in high school, exactly. were you involved in any extracurricular activities, band, sports, that kind of thing? Uh, I did marching band for a couple of years. Yeah. Woo! Uh, I started with trumpet, and I was like, no, screw this, I want to hit things. And so I switched me to percussion. Hey, you're, you're trumpet. Yeah. Percussion. And uh, uh, theater, for me, theater took over all four years of my high school life. <laughs> uh, I did band for a little while. I was a drummer as well. Yeah. Um, and then I discovered something called video games, and I did that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was a huge choir nerd. I was in all the choirs, regular choir, madrigals, shoe choir. I was really cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I wanted to be a, a cheerleader on drill team really bad, but I that never happened for me. Um, and also theater, and I also played volleyball for a little bit. Yeah. Um, in high school, I was a competitive swimmer, and I was very successful at it. I actually had a, a scholarship to one of our state schools in Texas, and without my coach or my uh, parents knowing about it, I auditioned for the musical, which you couldn't do both. Our school is really big and you couldn't do both. You had to be really committed to one. And I got the lead in the musical and so I just quit swimming and <laughs> never looked back and ended up uh, accidentally majoring in theater like a lot of people who end up just like trying to find something else to do with their life and then finally giving in. Okay, this is, I picked this, you know. And with what so, you've done, I would call it a good choice. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a waste. Yeah. So, um, yeah, swimming and then theater. Um, I was in choirs, and then I also, in the beginning of high school anyway, I swam, I ran track, I played baseball, I played basketball. Oh man, sports. Yeah, I did a lot of sports. Um, and I, I was in the, the boxing club as well. Um, and then theater took over. Oh, and I was in bands too, but not much band. So all the things. Well, I did all the things. Yeah. <laughs> all of them. All right, I have set the tone for the type of questions that we do with this panel, so now it's your turn. Who has questions for our voice? Yes, you can come on. Uh, black hat, come on up. Black hat. Oh, black hat. Black hat. Black hat. Black hat. <laughs> I heard you mentioned David Bowie. Do any of you others have like a favorite musician you'd love to meet? Just kind of keep... No, I should. Hmm. Um, Unfortunately, um, a couple of them have passed recently for me. Uh, Prince and David Bowie were really high up on that list for me. Um, yeah, it's hard to beat those two. A lot of the ones I'd like to meet are dead. What do I gotta do to make that happen? <laughs> Uh, my uh, my favorite band is Muse, so I'd love to meet that Matt Bellamy and then take over his job. I love it. Um, <laughs> Beyonce would be really cool. I love Beyonce, and then I also really, from a pretty young age, like middle school going forward, I've always loved Tori Amos. It would kind of be a dream to meet her. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I would love to meet Paul McCartney. I've been a big fan of his work uh, in the Beatles and his solo work as well. <laughs> um, classical musician, I would love to meet Linda Etter. I think she's amazing. Uh, from a nostalgia standpoint, I would love to meet the Spice Girls. All yeah. Yeah. And uh, top 40 artist, um, I would love to meet... Um, Oh, no. <laughs> 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 it's the 
the seasonal spice yeah. girl. She comes out of hiding for a few months yeah. and then she's just a tour member. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Contemporary <laughs> artist, um, I would love to meet Melanie Martinez. I think she's really good. I don't really keep track of the musicians that I listen to. Like, I guess just for the sake of saying one, David Draymond is the lead singer for Disturbed. That was kind of the first band that I got into on my own. Yeah. Then I can ask him what the heck happened with the last four albums. <laughs> You're the rest of the family. Next question. Yes, while we cut up. If the mics weren't wired, I'd bring them back. I apologize. Kitties. Oh, I want to tell you. What was your favorite anime that you've ever starred slash played? That's like, who's your favorite child? <laughs> <laughs> you can choose a favorite child. Uh, yeah. Darker than black. Yeah. Oh, darker than black? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably Princess Jellyfish. Yes! Yeah, I love yeah. that. Really, one of my more recent favorites uh, was Maria the Virgin Witch. That was really amazing. Uh, it's a toss-up between Blood Blockade, Battlefront, and uh, The Empire of Corpses. Uh, yeah. oh, wow. Wow. Um, old fave is uh, Hachin from Ichiko and Hachin, and new fave is Nona from Death Parade. Ooh, Death Parade was great. <laughs> um, if I had to pick one, it would be Akane from Psycho Pass. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Thank you. Next. Good question. In the yellow shirt, yes, sir. <laughs> Love your crafting gear. <laughs> Chocobos. <laughs> nice. Uh, your favorite documentary. Oh, wow. I way too many. <laughs> I hope you don't mind, I think I'm a... Dude, you almost harmonized, yeah. like... Yeah. <laughs> Got him, go ahead. Vernon, Florida. Uh, what was it? <laughs> Vernon, Florida. Documentary. Okay. Documentary. There was a two-part, uh, really in-depth documentary on the Third Reich, called Third Reich, The Rise and Fall, that was completely told from the perspective of the German people really? before and during World War II, That's and like with, uh, dude, it was it was crazy. Highly recommend it. <laughs> uh, I've fallen up in love with uh, Jiro Dreams of Sushi. Oh, yeah. I love that one. It, it rips my heart out, and I, I don't think I could watch it again, but in terms of just the reaction that I had and how it was put together, um, Dear Zachary. It was, oh my god, don't watch it if you're having a good day, don't watch it if you're having a bad day, pick somewhere in the middle. Just don't watch it. You'll ugly <laughs> cry. You'll ugly <laughs> cry. Oh. Uh, Did you answer? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I didn't answer, I'm having a hard time remembering the names of documentaries, because I... Oh no, I just, I don't even, I don't even know, I can't remember, uh, <laughs> I can't remember what I watched. I watch a lot on Netflix, yeah. Um, but just, uh, I don't, uh, this isn't a documentary, but I really like it. Is it, uh, Ancient Aliens? Can I pick a mockumentary? Yeah. Uh, Waiting for Guffman, Christopher Guest. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna change my answer. I think a fog of war. McNamara? My favorite mockumentary is really the really best in show. Okay. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mockumentary. Mockumentary. My, my favorite mockumentary is The Runners. <laughs> Spinal Tap, by the way. Come on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Next question. Yes. Come on. Oh, she scared the crap out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Can I do it again? There you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, so, um, if there was any other voice actor that you haven't met but would love to meet, uh, who would it be and why? Clancy Brown, because he was the Kurgan. Mark Hamill, because Mark Hamill. <laughs> that is my answer as well. Yes. Frank Walker, because he's your childhood and everyone's... I 
a soul sign. I can't think. No, you haven't. Oh. I can soul sign. Who is that? What was that? I don't know. Someone's throwing things, man. Is that a ten minute? Yep. Yep. Are you throwing gang symbols? <laughs> Blood. Oh, so uh -huh. so Seth MacFarlane. He can do everything. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that wasn't the question. Yeah. I'm not saying I'd feel good after it, but yeah, he's super talented. That helps answer mine. I, the, I, names, y'all have second names, but uh, the creators of South Park. Oh, yeah. uh, Matt and Trey. Matt and Trey. Yeah, Parker, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Nice. Question, Blondly. Hi. Uh, Hi. Hi. So, what would be your advice for like, people getting, wanting to get into voice acting for things just like specifically? Ooh, okay. Uh, be becoming an actor first, first and foremost, I would say would be kind of the, the most direct path to follow because, you know, like everybody up here, we got to start in theater. Uh, we started training as actors first. Uh, another thing, uh, specifically for anime, don't, the best advice I would give for that is don't try to go for just anime because you're, 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 if you're going to put yourself into just one corner, like I'm only going to do this, uh, a, you're not really going to have much of a career, uh, and it kind of you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot because like there's a whole world of acting out there and a whole but yeah you're, you'd be pigeonholing yourself and also it's it's really hard because there's really only three places in the United States right now where you can do anime voice working uh, voice work professionally and that's Dallas, uh, L.A. and New York and there's some in Houston as well uh, so you would have to move to those places as well. Show of hands, who up here does something other than anime voice work? <laughs> How many know? hands can I put up? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think. Yeah. That's a good answer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, stand, I stand by your answer. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. I did have a question. Um, can I. Oh, good luck. Actually, I actually have two questions. <laughs> It just—it was in my—I had it. We've all been there, trust me. It's all good. I'm always there. <laughs> if you could meet any celebrity in the world, who would it be and why? Any celebrity. That's my first question. Any celebrity. So it doesn't have to be. Jason Lee. Who said that? Doki Doki. Uh. To name someone that hasn't come up in other questions, um, I'd love to meet Hayao Miyazaki. Yo. Talk to him about all the Miyazaki films. Carol Sanders. Yeah. I would, uh, okay. <laughs> so I'm a huge Deepak Chopra fan. Uh, I read like all of his books and I follow a lot of his meditations. So I would love the opportunity to have a face to face time with him. Yeah, I, I said this last night, but Steve Martin's my favorite actor. Yes. I've watched his movies since I was a little kid, and just love him. So I'd love to meet him. He hates these kids. Yes. <laughs> I love that one. Yeah, I've already kind of named. And can I get you guys to sign these? Uh, no, no, yeah, not here. At the autograph. Well, how? Uh, what's the next? They're on the. They're on the schedule. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, well, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. We all have lunch. We all have lunch today. Can I just get this sign, please, real quick, and then I'll leave? I'm sorry. I'm going to be here tomorrow. We have sessions today. They have sessions today. Yeah, we have sessions today. Right after this. Right after this. Jade and I are like 30 minutes after this ends. Yeah, right after this. Mine's at 6.30. Mine's at 8. Am I going to be here? One last question. Yes. Hello everyone. Hi. So we've done a lot about shows and stuff like that, but what about the written word? What are your favorite books or book series? Harry Potter. <laughs> I mean, that was the other person besides Deepak Chopra who is, I just said, one of my favorite authors. Uh, 
would be J.K. Rowling, for sure. Yeah, my, my answer is the same. Um, wow, this is a tough one. Uh, Cormac McCarthy's probably my favorite favorite. Um, recently, Ernest Klein in his book, Ready Player One. Oh, uh, so good. And I'm also a big fan of Elmore Leonard, all of his books. Uh, I've been I've been reading the Star Wars Expanded Universe since I was like eight, uh, and uh, I, got, I have to say, maybe Timothy Zahn is one of my favorites out of all those, especially when he created Admiral Thrawn, and now that dude's canon, yep. which is crazy, that's and that's uh, he gets to do a new one now that's going to officially be in the canon. Uh, other than that, like Christy Golden, uh, she's written some books for Star Wars. She's also written a lot of the Warcraft books, and uh, just yeah, those two, I think, most. And uh, as, the as far as Star Wars is concerned, it's especially impressive considering what Disney has been doing to anything that wasn't just in the movies. They, yeah. They've been pushing it all as a note. This is we're going with this story. Yeah. So if he was able to hold what yeah. he did, that's that's really impressive. Yeah, the fact that he he's the only writer out of all of the expanded universe novelists that has a character that is canon now. It's crazy. My my favorite book uh, from childhood uh, was The Secret Garden. I read it like 15 times. Uh, my new, like a, a newer series that I'm getting into that I love um, is called the Splinter series. Uh, it's like a, um, a modern day interesting retelling of the events in Alice in Wonderland, which again, I'm obsessed with. Um, and one of my uh, other favorite books that I, I revisit a lot, it's like revisiting an old friend, is uh, called Wildwood Dancing. Um, I'm a big fan of the uh, Chronicles of Narnia series by C.S. Lewis. Uh, you guys are clapping a lot, thank you. Um, specifically Voyage of the Dawn Treader, which is beautiful. Um, but newer series, I just got into Lockwood & Co. If you like ghost stories, check it out. I know a few of our, uh, a few of our guests have a bunch of panels they need to get to. They have additional autograph signings today. Um, so I'm going to let them go and get off to their stuff. So uh, let's give our uh, guests a round of applause.